thank you all for coming. And um, I know you guys are probably a little nervous with everybody else there running around in the back, but I'm hoping, hoping you, you'll get something interesting out of it. Um, as you know, we do this uh, every year. Um, and every year, we're, I'm trying to give you guys an update about what we've done, uh, what we've learned over the past year. Um, and this year, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what we've been working on. Um, and I think it's actually very apropos. I mean, uh, I don't know whether you guys heard about the uh, World Health Organization just announced, uh, I'll show you a slide there, um, that kids under the age of five are not supposed to do any screen time, you know. Uh, or minimize screen time to less than two hours. So it's, it's very, very interesting. Uh, there's a lot of um, concern about screen time. So I'm going to tell you all about what we've done over the past year. And uh, obviously, this is an evolving story. So this is something that will continue to uh, get updated. But you know, <clears throat> this is, these are just a few um, uh, less recent uh, headlines. Um, and there's a lot of uh, concern. Um, about uh, the effect on screen media and social media on kids. There's an enormous um, worry. Uh, it goes from, you know, uh, does uh, social media cause depression? Um, does it have anything to do with the increasing rates of depression? Um, does it adversely affect mental health? Um, and so, uh, and, and, you know, I'm a parent, so I'm uh, equally worried about this. And uh, so we've been interested in this as part of the local ABCD group um, in understanding um, how screen media activity affects or is associated with uh, various factors. And I'm going to show you some of those factors today. And we've also, and I, I showed this last year, we did a study where we looked at how it affects the brain, the developing brain. Although that's still early in the stages, because of course many of you know that um, this will go on for the next 10 years. And so, in really, in order to make um, a more educated, uh, uh, um, to really find out what is actually happening over time, we're going to have to wait till we get uh, more data. But this is this just came out yesterday, right? So. Um, <laughs> So WHO says limit or no screen time for kids under the age of five. Um, and you know, I don't know about you guys, but that uh, would si significantly change the way we're dealing with our uh, children. This, is, this was in the New York Times, and then it was also obviously picked up by the BBC. It's, it's really all over the news. Um, and what I have to say to this, I mean, th this is actually, uh, it, you know, it's, it's fairly far reaching. And this is focusing on kids under five. And I know the literature in this area reasonably well, because that's what we've been studying. And I have to tell you, there's almost nothing that we know about uh, in kids age 0 to 5 in terms of screen time. We really don't. Uh, you know, as you all know, um, we're studying uh, uh, your kids uh, and, and the age group starting at age 9, 10. Uh, and even there, we're the first to really report on kids in that age group. Before us, there really weren't uh, 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 any studies. But there may be one, one other study out of Australia that looked at uh, the younger kids. Most of the studies that we know of uh, have been done in teenagers. And of course, that's something that we're going to be looking at as well. But this is pretty radical. And it shows you um, that we really need to better understand um, how screen time ac uh, affects uh, kids. So. Um, this is just a, a little bit of background. Um, you know, what, what do we mean when we say screen media activity? It really means that anything that has to do with watching television videos, playing video games, using social media. And we know that that is now among the most common recreational activity in children and adolescents. Um, there's, there, there's estimates uh, that as much uh, as 90% of the time outside of school, kids are somehow linked or engaged with screen media. So it's really ubiquitous. And it's very, very uh, uh, common. And, uh, and there have been some report that have reported, uh, that have associated frequent screen media activity uh, with uh, what's called internalizing psychopathology. Really what that means is depression and anxiety. Um, as some externalizing that usually has to do with tamper tantrums and impulsivity. 
and also some greater risk behaviors, and even suicide. I'm going to show you some data from, from, from our cohort on suicide, actually, and suicide, uh, 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 really suicidal thoughts. Um, but there's been really uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, dis uh, um, been quite a bit of discussion in the field whether really the screen media activity is to blame for an increased association between problem behaviors. Um, uh, and as, as several studies have come out, they really have not shown uh, the association. Part of this is because it's really hard to tease apart what is the specific component or what's the specific effect of screen media activity on these types of behaviors. So what we've used, and uh, many of you probably are familiar with this, we used the survey that we do as part of this, uh, the ABCD assessment. So the ABCD assessment asks uh, the kids, uh, 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 you know, uh, how often, how much do they watch TV shows and movies, watch videos, play video games on a computer, uh, uh, text on a cell phone, tablet or computer, visit social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and others, and video chat. Um, and so those are uh, the main questions uh, that we're asking as part of the, uh, the, the screen media survey. Um, and right off the bat, this is actually also, we know this is a limitation. Because as many of you can guess, what the kids are telling us may not exactly what the kids are doing. Um, and we're actually now thinking of ways of how can we get better assessments. And we could talk about this at the very end. So, um, so, so what we then did is we looked at the first 4,000 kids, which is the uh, first data set that we had available. And we divided up into basically low, mid, um, uh, low to high groups of, uh, of the amount of screen media activity that uh, the kids are reporting. So let me just, this is not, oops. Yeah, and so uh, what, what, what you can see here is that the lowest group, the lowest quartile, so the lowest fourth, um, the average time here is about seven hours per week in screen media activity, reported. These are kids reported. And then when we get to the highest group, we're almost at 55 hours a, a, a week of uh, some form of screen time. So it's quite a, quite a range. And so what we then looked at is, is there any do we see any associations that are, um, that are obvious? Well, um, one thing we looked at is, for example, uh, uh, weight. And, and we did find that the kids that tend to do uh, more screen media activity tend to be a, 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 a little heavier than the kids that do less of it. So that's something that, um, uh, uh, that is certainly something we need to uh, continue to follow up on. Uh, but I'll show you in a moment that, see, when you, when you look at these associations, that doesn't mean that there's any causal relationship. And oftentimes, uh, these activities are associated with other things that may actually have to do more with, uh, uh, with the changes that we're seeing here. Um, we also, one interesting uh, uh, piece of information that, that has been pretty strong as well is that the rates of um, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the number of uh, parents that are, or the percentage of parents that are married tends to be higher in the low uh, group relative to the high group as well. And there are other uh, sort of general differences. But what I'm going to walk you through now is how do we tease this apart? How do we make it specific to actually the screen media activity? So what we did is we, we used some sort of fancy statistical approach to try to tease apart what is due to uh, uh, different components. And we had the major components that we looked at is um, a basically an assessment called the child behavioral checklist. That's something that you actually guys fill out about the kids. Um, we did, uh, uh, we looked at the cognitive assessments of the kids. Uh, we looked at um, family conflict and family social behavior, and then obviously also screen media activity. So here is uh, basically, this is one component that we identified, which we call psychopathology. It really has to do with um, the, the, the problem behaviors on the child behavioral checklist. So that's an anxiousness, uh, um, uh, attention problems, those kinds of things. And what I'm going to show you is how much of what we're seeing is due to this versus, say, due to um, the screen media activity. 
Um, another factor is uh, what we call cognition. That's basically the degree to which the kids do well on these cognitive tests. Um, that is, um, has to do with um, uh, uh, um, uh, list, uh, sorting lists, sorting cards, um, uh, uh, doing some uh, reading, uh, 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 and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's more of the cognitive uh, component. Um, and then uh, we, we, we did identify one overall screen media factor. So this is basically um, a, a, any kind of screen media activity, uh, anything that I told you about. But then we also identified another interesting factor, which is actually uh, key, um, basically when you engage in more social versus other media activities. So you can see, for example, it's mostly social networking, texting, and chatting versus, say, video watching and gaming. So th those are kind of the, uh, on the opposing end. And I'm going to tell you much more about this because we found some really interesting kind of uh, surprising stuff with this. So that's the, what we call social versus other media factor. So the first thing we were interested in is, well, how does it relate to physical activity and family conflict? So this was uh, a, a fairly early study we did. Um, and interestingly enough, so if you look at physical activity, what we actually find, and this, is all, this was quite surprising to us, regardless of whether we looked at the, uh, uh, the boys or the girls, that those kids that were relatively more active on social versus other media were actually more physically active. So that shows you basically this line here shows the, uh, the amount of uh, uh, self-reported uh, physical activity. So if anything, um, you know, social media activity in this case was uh, associated with more activity. And I'll tell you what, how we think about this in, in just a little bit. Um, there was actually relatively little effect on general media activity and physical activity. Um, and actually also, uh, also relatively little effect on uh, uh, psychopathology and cognition. Um, so that actually didn't account for much. Um, if we looked at conflict, which is also very surprising to us, um, if anything, there was lower youth reported family conflict in those kids that actually did more relatively more social media activity versus other media activity. It's a little bit more in the general activity in terms of um, those kids that had more general media activity reported a little bit more family conflict, but this was really striking. And again, it was the same for boys and girls, didn't really make a difference. Um, and then finally, the effects on sleep uh, were really very, very minor. Um, there was maybe a little bit of an increase in sleep problems uh, in those kids with, uh, 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 with more general media activity. But it was the, the effect was really uh, weak. Um, this is, for example, the effect on uh, psychopathology. So if you have, for example, problems with uh, depression, anxiety, you have much more problem, uh, many more problems with, um, with sleep. So this is really uh, very minor. So based on these data, actually, um, it, we could not find a strong relationship between screen media activity uh, um, and reduced physical activity. Um, and if anything, the kids that were more active socially on social media were actually more active. And, and you'll see this kind of trend uh, throughout. The next thing we were interested in, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a background, is unfortunately we know that uh, the, uh, the, in, in particular this is true for teenagers, that the number of uh, teenagers that are thinking about uh, death and thinking about suicide is increasing. Um, and we also know that the rates of suicides in teenagers is increasing. So this is obviously something that we're very worried about. So uh, obviously we wanted to look at whether screen media activity um, had anything to do with the kids reported uh, suicidal thinking. And I'll, I'll tell you more how we measured this in just a moment. Um, so here we basically show you, um, of the roughly 4,000 kids, about, five, about 600, close to 600 kids, actually reported um, that they had some thoughts of hurting themselves or suicide. Um, so this is not an insignificant number. Um, uh, uh, and um, uh, if we look at this, uh, well, we found that uh, there was there was some differences here. Um, uh, you can see that they're slightly higher in uh, video watching and gaming. Um, but they're really very, uh, uh, again, the point here is when you look at these raw numbers, you really, it's very difficult to, uh, to, um, ad to attribute this 
specifically to these kinds of activities or whether it's masked by other things. That's why we use these more complex statistical tools to really tease that apart. Um, so here's a, just a whole list of, um, uh, of questions that we used uh, uh, um, uh, and, and uh, assess whether uh, the kids uh, thought about death, dying, and, uh, and, and potentially even hurting themselves. Uh, and we used any of these questions as indicators that the kids might be thinking about death and suicide. Um, so here is now sort of the summary of what we found. So I'm going to try to kind of tell you a little bit, uh, unpack that a little bit for you. So we did basically two, uh, two assessments. One is um, uh, to kind of quantify severity. One was to determine uh, whether there was a relationship between the amount of or the number of uh, suicidal items reported and any of these uh, factors. And the other one was simply whether the kids said yes to any one of them. And what we found is that, um, so here's, here's the key uh, uh, factors that we talked about, uh, that I talked about before, how we tried to tease this apart. What we found is that, yes, there is an increased um, there is an increased um, a, a, a number of reports of suicidal items, but it is really related mostly to, to the kids that also report problems with depression, problems of anxiety, um, and so on. Uh, there's a little bit of an effect in general media activity, but it's relatively weak. What again was surprising to us uh, is that the kids that actually reported being more active so on social media versus other media, they actually had fewer reports of uh, suicidal uh, thoughts and thoughts of death and self-hurting behaviors. So this was really surprising to us. So um, you know, the effect of the psychopathology is what we expected. Um, we also, you know, again, this is something where we, uh, and I showed you the, the raw data before, we saw gaming and video watching, there's a slightly increase, but you have to put this in context. If you actually compare this to some of the other factors that we're looking at, so we, for example, we look at uh, ethnicity, uh, we looked at uh, parental education, uh, we looked at marital status um, and parental income. Um, these other factors are either um, more important um, or they're equally important. Um, and again, these numbers are relatively modest. Um, and if we looked at this just simply whether the kids reported uh, any suicidal and uh, uh, thinking and, and, and thoughts of death. We saw a very similar pattern. Again, the psychopathology plays a significant role. And, uh, but again, surprisingly, uh, when we looked at social media, uh, we saw actually uh, relatively uh, less likely to report uh, any suicidal thinking or, uh, or thoughts of death. And again, some of the same factors, obviously, that we uh, had uh, on the number of reports, we also had on uh, whether there was any report. S so the point here is that for w uh, uh, most importantly, m screen media activity is not one thing. Uh, there's, uh, there is uh, uh, the, the video gaming, the uh, video watching on the one hand, and there's the social media activity on the other. And what we're finding, if anything, that these have opposing effects, that uh, there is a slight increase with general media activity, that would be like the video watching, but there, if anything, there's a reduction uh, with social media activity. Then we were interested in, well, is, if the kids are engaged in these, um, uh, in these uh, screen media activities, so you know, video watching, anything else, does that displace other activities? Are the kids that are basically active on these, uh, are they less active on other things? And so part of what we use is we, there's a very comprehensive question of any kind of activities, I know you know this, any kinds of activities that the kids are engaged in. So I'm going to show you a whole series of, of these activities. Um, so this is, again, uh, in a very similar format. We're looking here at uh, baseball and basketball activities. And again, what we're finding here is almost no effect on uh, uh, media activity, on the frequency uh, 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 or the, 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 the amount of activity engaged in uh, whether the kids are playing baseball uh, or, or whether they are playing basketball. There are lots of other effects that we could go into and talk about, but really there's almost n uh, no effect. In fact, there is no effect here 
on a social me media or a screen media activity. Um, same, uh, very similar numbers we get for uh, whether the kids are uh, engaged in football. If anything, there's actually they're a little more active when they're, uh, uh, when they're uh, in, uh, doing more screen media activity and social activity, but this very weak effect. Uh, uh, there was no effect on gymnastics. Um, if we looked at soccer, there was basically uh, uh, no effect. Um, so in other words, there was no effect of uh, those kids who have more media activity or more social media activity uh, that they would do actually uh, more uh, uh, or less uh, soccer playing. And then we also looked at uh, swimming. And the one thing, again, we find, and we found this in a couple of other, if this, the, the kids that are actually act active in social media, they tend to be more likely to do uh, more swimming. Uh, but that's, again, the effects are very weak. Uh, I really want to uh, um, emphasize what we're finding here uh, with these, that sports activities, at least at this age, do not compete with the screen media activity. In other words, we cannot say that the kids that are doing a lot of texting and chatting and whatever not, they, they don't do other things. That's not true, not based on, on the data we have. Uh, we also looked at uh, arts activities. So if you uh, look at music, um, you see that if anything, again, there's a little bit more uh, music activity in kids that are socially, uh, that are active on social media. Uh, but and for, for art, there's basically, uh, there's almost no effect there. A little bit um, fewer art activities in uh, kids that have more cognitive problems, but that's, uh, again, the effects are very minor. So what can we conclude from this? And I think it is very important that because uh, again, I showed you in the beginning, there's a lot of concern about screen media activity in the media. There's now the WHO is concerned about early screen media exposure. But what we find here is um, screen media activity is not uniformly bad. Um, that we find the kids that are relatively more active on social media were more physically active, had less family conflict, uh, had fewer sleep problems, and fewer thoughts of death. We did see some issues with general media activity, that there was more conflict, uh, uh, more sleep problems, and more thoughts of death. Um, that when you look at other activities, there really are small effects on other activities. And for the most part, you can almost discount them. Um, we did find that the social media users are generally more physically active, but we found no effect on, uh, on art or music in terms of uh, more or less uh, 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 music activity. The point being is that as far as we've looked at the data at this stage, and, and I have to say, of course, the important aspect here, that these are what we call cross-sectional, meaning that we're looking simply at association. We cannot look at causation, not with these types of data. But based on, the, on, on these data, um, I, I would be very cautious to kind of um, be overly concerned, at least at this age, right? So we're talking about nine to 10-year-olds. Now, um, what we obviously want to do is how does this now change as the kids are going through puberty? Because we know that lots of things are happening during that period of time. Um, and it is entirely possible that the picture changes um, as the kids are getting older. Um, that, uh, you know, obviously there are other reasons why the kids do social media and so on and so forth. Um, we also are very, uh, so, you know, I did show you some evidence that uh, maybe uh, uh, there's some evidence for gaming, maybe for um, some other uh, 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 media activity, uh, that there could be some increased uh, 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 problem behaviors, like thoughts of death and things of that nature. So we're looking at how can we identify warning signs of what we would call dysfunctional screen media activity. So when does it become a problem? How do we identify when it becomes a problem? That's a big goal for us now. Um, then we also want to, we want to understand how does screen media activity change the brain over time? What we found, uh, and, and I reported on this last year, what we found is that basically the kids that engage in lot, lots of screen media activity have uh, brain patterns uh, that suggest that, uh, 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 that the, the, the parts of the brain that is important for um, processing visual information and, uh, uh, and, uh, um, and aud auditory information like tones and sounds is more mature. So it may be that by engaging extensively in these activities, you help maturing uh, uh, certain parts of the brain. But that was, again, just a cross-sectional study, but we want to see how this changes over time. 
We, are, we, we also obviously are very uh, much uh, interested in how screen media act, uh, activity affects school performance, friend and family relationships. Um, and for that, we really need these uh, longitudinal data. We need to see what happens over time. Um, and then lastly, and that, uh, this is something that we've been thinking about over the last year, how can we better measure screen media activity? At this stage, a lot of this is based on asking the kids. And again, uh, you have to take those answers with a grain of salt. Um, we're now looking at uh, um, potentially having, uh, um, you know, as the kids are getting older, maybe uh, have a period that we monitor the general activity, you know, where, they, uh, where we would basically record how much time they actually spend on different activities. That would give us a better measure of what the kids are actually doing. But we're working on this because obviously there are obvious uh, uh, concerns um, that, are, um, that, that come out of that. But I think that we need to have a more fine-grained understanding of when the kids are doing this, uh, what types of activity they're doing, um, and how that then uh, affects their mood uh, and other activities directly. Um, but I want to emphasize, so what we found over the last year, and, and this was uh, actually, I mean, I was fairly uh, open to accept that there, there's sort of a dark side of screen activity. And there may still be, and I'm, I'm not saying that uh, it's all, uh, I can all discount some of the, uh, the, the things that other people are saying. But what we found with ABCD so far is that um, um, there isn't strong evidence that uh, the screen media activity is bad for the kids. Um, and that's why I, I think we need to be careful, in, um, and, we, and we know I've been talking to other uh, groups about this, we need to be careful to make these recommendations without having a good knowledge base. And I think ABCD will help us to build that knowledge base. Um, and we need to um, obviously you know, do more studies, do more analysis uh, of the data. So I want to thank you for coming uh, uh, today. And obviously, um, I want to be open for questions, because I want to give you the opportunity to ask uh, uh, me and, and, the, and the staff uh, questions about what's going on, what we're doing. Um, but I want to really thank you for the participation in the study. And I'm really excited about it, and every year, you know, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, 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 talking to you. Thank you very much. Do you think that has something to do with the fact that right now there's children and not a lot is up to them? Like, mm -hmm. my son is in dance class or swimming or something, and I take him whether he wants to go or not. So <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a very good question. Uh, that's a very good uh, point and also a good question. So here's what I think we, we, uh, is, is ongoing. So when we talk about social media activity, it's a lot of it is chatting and talking. Uh, um, and I think what's happening, it is in the context of those activities, right? The kids are trying to find out who's where, doing what. Um, and yes, you have a strong influence on, uh, uh, on uh, f physical activity and other activities on the kids at this age. Um, and um, and it, it, the, the picture may change. We're, we're entirely open to that possibility, and we need to watch um, uh, when it changes and how it changes. Um, I, I think the best you can do at this stage is exactly what you're saying, is to uh, set the kids up with these skill sets. Um, from another study that we've actually done over the past year, we know, for example, that physical activity is probably the single best thing you can do to your kids to help them prevent uh, 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 developing depression and anxiety in the future. We know from very large uh, studies and from different types of studies that uh, physical activity can act as a prevention for depression and anxiety. So if, you, you know, if these kids are active, that's, that's, that's great. But I agree with you. I think we need to now look how does this, as they become teenagers, as they do their own thing, um, you know, how, how, does, how, how does the picture change? Yeah, no, this, this is actually, a, so, so yeah, let me t tell you a little bit about what our uh, a, a procedure is. Um, and we do get warnings. Uh, so so a any one of those questions, um, uh, uh, if that is answered, I actually get a text message on my phone uh, that somebody has answered that question uh, in the affirmative. 
And then what happens is uh, I, tend, uh, I Im almost immediately contact uh, Florence or any other study uh, coordinator. And then we uh, basically uh, discuss, you know, after the interview is done, what happened, what did the kids say. Um, and then uh, the next, the first thing we, we want to find out uh, at this stage, you know, do the parents know? Um, and um, if mo most of the time the parents do know, uh, but if the parents don't know, then we talk to the uh, 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 to the uh, kid and and try to find out, you know, it, it does does the does the child want to talk about it? Does they ch and for the most part, you know, once we talk to the child and we basically help to understand what's happening, uh, 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 they're usually pretty open to then, and then we talk to the parents, um, and then basically we uh, uh, try to figure out a way of. Okay, is it serious? You know, trying to assess how serious it is. It is, and then we try to determine what can we do. So we do we make referrals. So it's a pretty extensive sort of follow up. So none of these questions, if they, you know, I mean, none of these questions gets glossed over. The moment that these come up, you know, we have sort of a whole procedure in place, for obvious reason. And so far, you know, uh, again, knock on wood, uh, we've had pretty good outcomes. So where even when the when the child in the beginning said, well, you know, I really don't want to talk about it. Um, we sort of found a way of engaging, because that's really what we want to do. Is we want to see that how can we engage the child in the, recognizing that this might actually be a problem. Right? Sometimes, sometimes the kids don't even know that this is a problem, or could be a problem. Sometimes they may misunderstand the question, because you know, again, these are nine to 10 year olds. So, so, uh, so, but our, our procedures are pretty, uh, uh, you know, we, we, don't, we don't take these things lightly. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. No. That's it. That's a very good question. So I knew this was at some point somebody was going to bring this up. So we yes, we in fact we do look at this, and um, so you know, so so I have to tell you this is not the first time this is uh, uh, that we've encountered this. The correlation between what the parents report to us and what the kids report to us is very low, um, and this is. I hate to tell you this. Um, uh, maybe you already know this on some level, but uh, and, and this is fairly consistent. Um, in, it, it goes in both direction, um, because if it were sort of uh, in one direction, there would be more correlation. But it goes in both directions. Um, but uh, we've seen this before, where um, what the parents are reporting. So, for example, the, the, the one number that we have on both kids is the total amount of screen time estimated. Now, again, we have to also recognize that a 9 and 10 year old may not be sort of good at estimating that number. Um, but, uh, but even if you were to kind of look at this, uh, so, so it's usually the agreement is about, uh, uh, you know, 20%. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, so it is, it, it, it is pretty um, divergent. Also, I, 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 the other unfortunate uh, situation, we looked at the sample for the suicide questions. And unfortunately, the correlation there is pretty low as well. Um, and most of the time, um, it's not that, and, and when we look at, we, it may be just for the specific question. Um, uh, so it's not that the, the parents don't know at all, but they may not know what the kids are thinking in particular. Um, but we've seen, this, um, uh, we've seen this quite a bit in, in, in studies of uh, uh, parents and children, that um, the, the agreement of what the child says, I mean, for, interestingly enough, I mean, even if you look at family conflict, the correlations are not that high either. So what the kids report as family conflict and what the parents are reporting as family conflict is, uh, you know, the, 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 the agreement is relatively modest. So then for things like, do you take an average or do you just, like you said, do you look at the mm -hmm. Yeah, we do both. So, so, so yeah, no, that's a really good question. So for example, um, we did the analysis. What I showed you here is the kids reported, uh, mainly because actually the kids report a lot more than the parents report. Um, uh, but the, the results look very much the same. So if we actually look at the, uh, it's just that we don't have quite as much sensitivity to pick it up because the parent reports, it's about a, quor about a quarter of the uh, uh, parents report any suicidal item. Uh, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the kids have a much higher uh, re report.
That's a really good question. So we have, uh, that, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know whether we have that information uh, to see whether, because obviously we have the school information, but uh, I don't know whether we have the information whether they're using uh, screen you know, media basically for, for homework. Now, I have to say for all of these uh, data, that was screen media activity outside of school, right? So that, that didn't include school. Uh, but that's a really good point. I, I need to follow up on that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure that we actually have that information. Yeah, yeah. No, it, 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 there's no question that it, it becomes earlier and earlier. Yeah, that's a that, that's that's a really good question. We do ask about religion, um, and uh, we haven't looked at this yet. That's a really uh, uh, a, a important aspect: is um, looking at spirituality or religious. Uh, um, uh, uh, component and, and how that affects. Other people have looked at this in terms of, um, not in the kids here, um, in terms of uh, suicide. And there is a relationship that it tends to be people who are more spiritual have tend to have a lower rate of suicidal ideation. But we don't know this for the ABCD kids. It's a good point. No. And they admit that they're yeah. just being really precautionary and saying, yeah. we don't know it's good for you, we're going to say it's bad for you and tell you one otherwise. So I guess my question is, do you think that, there, are you planning to expand the study to younger children? Yeah. No, it, 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 no it's, a, it's a really good point. So, so the, 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 guy, the, the person that wrote the story, uh, she emailed me yesterday, uh, but I was too late and I couldn't make a comment on it because she wanted to see what, right. we, what we're thinking. Um, what I told her is that, uh, what I emailed her back is that we do need more studies of the young uh, uh, kids. Now, you may, uh, you may not be aware of this, but the, uh, the, the National Institute for Mental Health is thinking about uh, doing what they call a baby, uh, 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 they call it actually BBCD study, the baby uh, uh, ABCD. And the, and, the, and, the, and the goal of that is actually to get, um, to study pregnant moms and follow the kids over the first five years of life. Um, so that you, you get actually information even before the kid is born. Um, so there is a group here, the uh, uh, um, Oklahoma State University has actually put in a, an application to be part of that. Uh, so it, we, we might eventually become a site for that study as well, um, where we would look at very early behavior. Um, um, and, and, and because we need these studies. There's, I mean, I, again, I can tell you that there is no study that has looked at this um, and that's why when you look at, when you read that article, it, it, it ho-hums about a lot of these things. And I sort of feel like that takes away the credibility of what studies are actually finding. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it sets the tone of what people are thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, 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 and uh, what we're trying to do is we're saying, okay, don't judge too quickly. Um, wait for the evidence to come in. Again, I want to thank you for coming, and hopefully you can enjoy the uh, cookies and the pizza. And uh, I hope to see you next year with more results. Thank you. <laughs>